Welcome to the Sunsight Instruments AAT video training. This series is designed to not only familiarize you with the AAT system, but also give you the tools you need to effectively and efficiently operate the system. In this short module, we will start with a brief history about our company, where we came from, why we started Sunsight Instruments, and what our products are built to do. Sunsight Instruments began as an effort to address network quality and network performance issues for new installations of wireless systems throughout the world, as well as address the same problems during audits of existing wireless networks. The AntennaWare Attitude Sensor, or AAS, device was our first product. It is a passive sensor that is placed on top of each antenna on the tower and is left behind after the install. Using the sun's position relative to the Earth, latitude and longitude of the location of the antenna, and time of day, we are able to triangulate the azimuth of the antenna. And using accelerometers, we are able to determine tilt and roll with the AAS. The AAS was revolutionary in the determination of antenna alignment after the fact, but carriers needed a system that would allow them to figure out how to install their antennas correctly the first time. When RF engineers were designing these networks, proper installation was their greatest challenge. After designing a network, the design would be handed off to the construction teams, who would then sub that work out to contractors, who would then construct the site. Unfortunately, there were no systems in place to confirm that the sites were, in fact, installed correctly, and often network issues would arise as a result. SunSite Instruments was formed to help address this problem. The traditional method for aligning the antenna for azimuth has always utilized a magnetic compass. Unfortunately, magnetic compasses are greatly affected by the magnetic lines of flux that rotate around the Earth and are impacted by steel and metal objects. The towers are steel, the mounts, the brackets, and many of the antennas themselves have steel in them. The typical compass can be easily thrown off 10 or 20 degrees or more just by metal being worn as well as by underground and overhead power lines. These factors make them ineffective for use close to the antenna and tower, forcing crews to move away some distance in order to get an azimuth heading. Another issue that we have with magnetic compasses is declination. Declination is simply the difference between magnetic north and true north, which will depend on your position on the planet. So after taking your magnetic measurement with a traditional compass, you would add or subtract the declination to obtain your true north measurement. Not only did crews have to ensure that the compass reading was correct, but they also needed to have the correct declination number for the location of the antenna and add or subtract that number accurately. Obviously, this is another calculation that crews had to perform during installation, which meant there was another piece of data that was subject to error. As such, with a traditional compass, the final reading was likely to be slightly different every time the calculations were performed. In situations where different crews are involved, the likelihood of variations increases even further. In an effort to remedy these issues, we sat down with RF engineers and some former NASA engineers and came up with a new flagship product, the Antenna Alignment Tool, or AAT. The AAT allows us to provide alignment information from the antenna systems as they are installed and feed that information back to the RF engineers, allowing them to confirm that the networks they designed are installed correctly. The AAT only reports True North in its measurements, eliminating magnetic compass readings from the equation. The internal GPS compass system used in the AAT allows more accurate readings from the start. Another benefit of the GPS compass is more accurate reporting giving the same readings for anyone using the system. This means that new crew members and seasoned veterans will achieve the same data at the end of the day. The AAT also creates secure data reports internally, eliminating the need for handwritten paper reports created on site. The secure data reports are in PDF format and cannot be edited. And this data can be shared with site supervisors and RF engineers with absolutely no data entry eliminating human error along the way. The AAT uses internal accelerometers to determine tilt and roll, a laser tape drop to determine AGL height, and a patented GPS compass to determine an azimuth solution. Let's look a little closer at the GPS technology. 
GPS is a line of sight technology which basically means we need to have a direct view of the satellites from the antenna in order to take any measurements or readings. It's not like a cell phone where it can use multipath and frequency can penetrate buildings and other objects. The AAT needs a good view of the sky and satellites for it to work. Because of this requirement, when we later talk about mounting, we need to make sure that we mount the device as high on the antenna as possible while keeping the displays at eye level so that you can still read them and still work with the tool. By mounting in this fashion, we don't need to worry about our bodies interfering with the device any more so than the platforms or even the metal around us. The GPS antennas themselves are designed to go 5 degrees below the horizon and a full 360 degrees around. Mounting the AAT high on the antenna will give it the best opportunity to have the visibility to the sky to see as many GPS satellites as possible. Another important fact relating to the GPS satellites is that they are not geosynchronous. They are flying around the Earth at speeds of around 14,000 kilometers per hour. This means that each of the satellites will orbit the Earth about two times per day. Direct TV satellites, on the other hand, are geosynchronous, so that means that it's in one spot and you can aim your dish at it and you don't have to worry about it moving. Given the fact that the GPS satellites are flying around at different times, the GPS subsystem needs to have five satellites in order to determine an azimuth solution. However, once the AAT derives an azimuth solution, it only needs four satellites to maintain it. Typically, when you take the device outside and turn it on, you're going to see eight to 10 satellites. So usually, this doesn't pose a problem. AATs from serial number 801-08004 forward have GLONASS support built in. GLONASS support allows the AAT to see almost twice as many satellites compared to using the GPS system alone. The charts being shown illustrate the number of satellites available when using GPS only versus GPS plus GLONASS. This feature improves the AAT's ability to quickly obtain an azimuth reading and allows it to better handle multipath interference and poor satellite coverage. In addition to those benefits, the GLONASS support further improves the accuracy of the tool. With regards to interference, many times users ask about the platform that's right above them and how it affects the AAT's ability to work with GPS satellites. Since the platform is above you, it really isn't the biggest source of interference for you. Recall that the AAT's GPS antennas are capable of seeing 5 degrees below the horizon, so you're still going to have a huge part of the sky that's available to locate enough GPS satellites, enabling it to determine an azimuth solution. Furthermore, the way the GPS subsystem works is that it collects the information from the satellites, records their location, their elevation in the sky and satellite number, and a few other pieces of information. Those get loaded into the tables within the device, allowing the GPS subsystem to get better over time. As it goes about collecting that data, it saves it into its database and constantly refines the azimuth solution. This concludes the introductory video to the SunSight AAT training course. To continue your training, review the AAT basic overview video.